parks are an everyday part of healthy city life. And this one in Perth looks pretty idyllic. But looks don't always tell the whole story. The water in most lakes and rivers has a pH between 6 and 8, the same as tap water. We'd expect this lake to be about the same. We're going to test it. For comparison, we'll test some tap water first. When we add universal indicator to tap water, it turns green. So we know its pH is around 7. Now we'll add the universal indicator to the lake water. It's turning yellow and that means it's acidic. If we want to know just how acidic this lake water is, we can check it with a pH meter. The reading is around 4, which is quite acidic. What's really strange is that in this area, it's not just the lake water that's showing a low pH. Something weird's happening to the groundwater too. Back in 2001, a local resident used bore water on their veggie patch and everything died. The bore water was found to have a pH of 2.5. When the local council investigated, they found other bores in the area had a pH under 5.5. So what caused this lake and the groundwater to become so acidic? The answer's in the soil. If we dig below the water table, we find this black sand. I'm going to collect a sample and run some tests. First I'll look at the pH. I'll add water and mix it up. The reading is around 4, which is quite acidic. With the next test, I'm going to add oxygen in the form of hydrogen peroxide. That's some reaction and it's going to have an effect on the sample's pH. The pH is now 1.8. The oxygen we added has sped up the acidification process. So what's causing this reaction? Well, the black sand contains a form of iron sulphide known as pyrite. Iron sulphides develop under low oxygen conditions in boggy, waterlogged sites. For it to form, you need the right mix of materials. Organic matter, sulphate ions, iron oxides, and a type of bacteria that loves low oxygen conditions. The right conditions and the right mix of materials leads to a series of reactions that result in iron sulphides being formed. Iron sulphides, including pyrite, aren't a problem when they're left alone, but disturbing them creates all sorts of problems. And that's what happened at this lake. When I added hydrogen peroxide to the black sand, it started a really fast reaction between the iron sulphides and oxygen, creating an acid solution. The same thing will happen just by digging up this black sand and exposing it to the air. It's just not as fast. When this lake was built, the excavated soil was used as a base for the children's playground. This exposed the iron sulphides in the soil, which then reacted with the air. So whenever it rained, acidic water seeped into the lake and groundwater. But not all the acidity in this area came from the lake. Local building works also disturbed more pyrite-rich soil. One consequence of such extreme acidity is that substances that were once safely locked in the soil are released, and the water can become laced with materials like arsenic and heavy metals. One way to avoid some of these problems has been to deepen local bores, 
so they end up below the acidic groundwater. This area is also being carefully managed to avoid future problems. Currently, a number of research projects are investigating ways of dealing with the existing acidity. It's hoped remediation can reverse the acidification process. But there are other places in Western Australia where iron sulphides are being formed right now. This is the Pilhavi Estuary near Mandra. Out there on the estuary floor, the sediments have a source of iron, sulphate and organic matter. But below the surface, there's not much oxygen. Sound familiar? Just like the lakes, this is the perfect condition for the reactions that lead to iron sulphide formation. In the estuary, a mixture of sediment, organic matter and iron sulphide minerals is collecting as a black ooze. This black ooze isn't a problem if it's left alone, underwater with little oxygen. But if you want to get boats through this shallow estuary, or if you want to dig a canal for a housing development, you're going to have to do some dredging. And dredging means those iron sulphides are exposed to oxygen in the water. This can release acidity, iron, sulphate, trace metals into the water. It can also strip the water of its oxygen. And then there's the issue of what to do with the sediment. In the past, dredged material from the estuary was dumped nearby. This whole area is dredge spoil from a boating channel. We've tested the pH of this soil, and just like the lake, it is very acidic. This level of acidity can be a huge problem for developers. It can dissolve building foundations, undercut bridge footings, even corrode concrete pipes. But there are other problems too. The drainage from this area can end up in the groundwater or the drainage ditches, another place where the black ooze can start to form. You can see this browny orange colour. That's the oxidised iron on the surface. But if we dig to the low oxygen conditions just below the surface, you get this inky black ooze where the iron sulphides are forming. Acid sulphate soils aren't just a problem in Western Australia, or even Australia, but all over the world. And because of the potentially devastating impact, it's a problem we need to manage, especially in developing areas. Right now, Western Australia is undergoing a period of massive development, with Mandra one of the fastest growing cities in Australia. So we need to avoid the problems that have gone before. The research that we're doing is helping us to understand acid sulphate soils and how we can successfully manage them in the future.